Tacos are a big deal at my house because we eat them all the time. My daughter loves ground beef tacos, you know, the tomatoey on the mild side with the crispy shells. My husband loves carnitas with tons of cilantro and scallions. And my favorite taco is a weird one. It's a salmon taco with a collard green slaw. I know, it's not an authentic taco, but it is delicious and fun if you're having people over because it's kind of fresh and healthy and feels new. Now I'm gonna start by making a quick sauce that is really nice to drizzle over the top. And I'm gonna use this mini food processor, which is my favorite gadget, really inexpensive, great for making things like this. And so we're gonna use half an avocado. I'm gonna add it right to the food processor. Um, we're gonna add just a little bit of yogurt. Now, about a tablespoon of yogurt. It just adds a nice creaminess because crema, you know, is usually based on cream. But this adds a tanginess I like. And again, this recipe was developed with superfoods in mind, so that might make some sense why this crema is the way it is. I'm gonna add some cilantro. Obviously, I've washed the cilantro already. I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cup. Now, I always use the cilantro stems because they have just the same amount of flavor as the leaves. In fact, I think the stems of cilantro are a bit sweeter. Not the same with parsley, just cilantro. But in this, I like the sauce to be on the smooth side, so I'm gonna get rid of them just for the sauce. And I'm gonna give them a quick chop before we put it in the food processor, just to help those plos processor. Plossessor, it's a lot like a processor, but it's plossible. All right, so it's about a quarter cup of cilantro. And add a little salt and pepper. Okay, a little bit of lime juice to help, just to help the blades go around, about a tablespoon. Last but not least, some water. Since I have the bottle of water out, I might as well use it for this too, you know what I'm saying? All right, three tablespoons of water, that should be good. You might need to adjust that water and lime amount just to suit yourself, or if you use thick yogurt like I did, you might need a little more water to make a sauce. This stuff actually tastes good on all sorts of things. I make something very similar to this when I make chili, but I use sour cream and tons of cilantro and scallions and lime juice, and on chili, it is amazing. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Oh, this really does make the taco. Don't skip this part. All right, let's set this aside for now, and you can actually make this a day in advance, and it doesn't change color much, thanks, I think, to all that lime juice and the yogurt. So, set that aside for later. Now let's move on to the weirdest part of this recipe, which is the slaw on top, which is based, as I mentioned before, on collard greens. Now, before this recipe, I'd never eaten raw collard greens. I've always had them really cooked for a long time, often with a ham hock or some bacon. So this was kind of a revelation to me, and I fell in love with eating raw collards. So here we have about four ounces of collard greens. You want about two cups chopped. And you know the stem in the middle? It's really tough and it doesn't taste very good. It tastes kind of bitter. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the collard greens away from the stem. This is trash. A couple ways you can trim that out. You can hold it up like I just did. I do this because it's fun. But another way to do it is you can lie it down flat. You can fold the leaf over in half and that just exposes that tough part of the collard greens and you can cut down on either side. That seems safer, right? Especially if you're doing this for the first time. Fold it over, cut it out, and there we go. Now I've washed these leaves already, and I'm just gonna chop them up into nice shreds, you know, like a slaw. So half leaves are good. If the leaves are big, I'll cut them lengthwise again to make them not so wide. Now that we have these long shreds, we're just gonna chop them crosswise into nice, fine shreds that you can sprinkle over the taco. And you know, knife work like this is my favorite part of cooking. There's only one way to learn how to cut fast and that is experience, doing it over and over. All right, we have to make the dressing for the slaw. And luckily the dressing is lime juice. Yep, that's why I squeezed all those limes earlier. And a little bit of lime zest, right? That I took off the limes before I squeezed them and salt. So it's a really minimal dressing here. No oil, you notice a lot of slaws have mayonnaise or olive oil or something. Not with this, because the salmon is so rich, you actually like the drier, more acidic slaw on top. All right, so into the bowl go the collards. 
Now we're gonna add a couple other vegetables. Jicama. So when you buy jicama, it has a lot of wax on this outside. That's just to help preserve it in the supermarket. It's hard to peel that off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a knife and just cut it off. So cut off the ends. And then, you know, just using the curve of the jicama, I'm just gonna curve my knife around and just trim off all that wax and that outside skin. It's a very thick skin, kind of like, kind of like a turnip or maybe a celery root. There we go. I'm gonna cut this into very thin matchsticks. Uh, and so I want them to be about that long, you know, so they can fit onto a taco. And the way you make matchsticks is first you make planks. You make the planks about as thick as you want the matchsticks to be. All the way to the end. <laughs> Oh, jicama is so good. It's like a cross between a Granny Smith apple and a sweet pea. So it has that texture of an apple, but the flavor of a good, clean spring sweet pea. All right, so now with a plank, you just cut it in the other direction into matchsticks. These are a little big. You can make them as big or as thin as you want. Again, I'm having fun by going fast. Probably because someone's watching. It's more fun to cut fast when someone's watching you. It's like a little show off. All right, into the bowl that goes. I'm gonna use my bench scraper. If you don't have a bench scraper, time to invest. These things are less than 20 bucks. And they just make it so easy to move food around the kitchen or if you're chopping onions here and you need to go to the stove, just makes it really seamless. All right, next step, we're gonna do half of a red onion. We're gonna slice the red onion thin. So to make the pole to pole cut, you basically angle your knife with the shape of the onion. I'll slow down. This hand is important, right? The claw. When I get about halfway through, I generally tip it over just to make it a bit easier for the second side. And it also leaves you with this middle part. And it's kind of a game. How many slices can I get before that collapses? Ooh, that was good. All right, so that's half a red onion. Next, we're gonna add some radishes. Nice peppery flavor, beautiful color. You can see this is unlike any other slaw that you've probably seen uh, on a taco, but man, is it good. In fact, I just make this slaw sometimes just to have on the side of any grilled meat or fish because it's just, it's refreshing, it's colorful, it's playful. And if you have people over for dinner, it's just so unusual. It's like a, you know, it's a good conversation. All right, so for the radishes, not quite matchsticks. I like the color. You only need about four radishes, which is only about half a bunch. All right, so that's four radishes. Recipe says to cut them into uh, matchsticks, but like I said, I like them in bigger, more recognizable pieces. Last but not least, some more cilantro, about a quarter of a cup or so. This time I'm going to leave the stems on. All right. Took that down pretty fine because I really like that flavor throughout the slaw. Generally against making grass clippings, but here it makes sense to have it minced pretty finely. All right, so there we go in the bowl. I know I'm using my hands. You could use tongs, I have tongs right here. But I just, I wind up just getting my hands into the food just because I like how it feels. I like to feel whether everything's coated or not. And now we can move on to the salmon. Now, salmon in a taco. We gotta give it a little bit of flavor because plain salmon would be kind of boring. But luckily this recipe makes it really easy. You can use wild or farm-raised salmon. I love wild salmon. Uh, I like its strong flavor. I like that it's leaner, but I also love the consistency of a farm-raised salmon that's done in a responsible way. So for me, you can't go wrong either way. Now for this recipe, it doesn't really matter how many pieces of salmon you have, how big they are, because we're just gonna break it up and put it into tacos. But what you want is to have about a pound and a half of salmon, that way you can make 12 tacos. And to give it some flavor, I'm just gonna add some chili powder. It has everything you need. It has a little cayenne, has the cumin, has the coriander. And just a teaspoon and a half is plenty for all this salmon. Gonna add a little bit of salt, obviously about three quarters of a teaspoon. All right, last but not least, some pepper. You wanna use about a quarter of a teaspoon pepper. I put a little more here because my mother, Marta's Oma, loves black pepper. In fact, she, uh, she goes to a special store to buy special pepper and she sends it to me in the mail because she swears it's the best. And that's it in that grinder. Hi, Oma. <laughs> We're just gonna sprinkle it 
right onto the salmon. You'll notice I'm using a rimmed baking sheet. It just helps me contain the mess a bit. Anything I can do to help contain my mess is well appreciated. Wiping up all the excess spices from the tray. And you just want to get that all nicely covered with spice. All right, now I'm gonna wash my hands and we can get cooking. So now it is time to cook the salmon. I'm just gonna use a nonstick skillet because, well, I don't want the salmon to stick. Uh, this is a 12 inch skillet. Here I have just a tablespoon of vegetable oil and I'm heating it up over medium high heat. Now, while I'm cooking the salmon, I'm also gonna toast some tortillas. Uh, I like using corn tortillas. I mean, it's traditional, right? But flour tortillas also work well here. And this is how I like to toast tortillas. Now, do you have one of these things? They're really, really silly. Uh, they cost less than $5. It's a tortilla warmer and they work really well. Uh, so after I toast the tortillas, I'm gonna snuggle them in here and this will just keep the tortillas warm for well, at least half an hour. I see that oil starting to shimmer. The pan's looking hot. So now I'm gonna start the salmon, the skin side up so that the spices hit that hot oil. And uh, one thing I learned after the first time you make this is that the salmon gets really dark. It almost gets charred and it looks like you're screwing up, but that charred spice flavor is delicious in the taco. So get a little char is okay. And the salmon cooks about three to five minutes on each side. And uh, as always, I'm gonna temp it to make sure it's cooked all the way through. The temperature for salmon, and this is farm raised, should be about 120 to 125. So now for the tortillas. To toast them, I'm gonna do it right on the burner. And this works if you have a gas stove. Obviously, if you have a glass stove, it won't work or an induction. You would just simply do them in a pan. But if you have the opportunity to toast your tortillas over a live fire, do it, especially a campfire, because that flame, that char adds in serious flavor. And that's good. See how that's just charred around the outside, a little bit spotty? That's what we're looking for. And here you can see that salmon. See how it's starting to burn and char a little bit? That's good. That char is good flavor. A couple more minutes on that side. Oh, yes! That's what you're looking for on a tortilla. Into the tortilla warmer it goes. On go some more tortillas. Sometimes, if I'm not cooking salmon, if I'm making a different kind of taco, I'll just get all the burners ripping and stand here like a short order cook. And that's fun, just flipping tortillas. Makes me feel cool. Ooh, that's perfect. So it's not burnt, it's just got a little bit of blackened char. I'm gonna flip those over, cook them on the second side. Depending on your stove, you might wanna turn it down when you cook on the second side, just to prevent too much smoke. But I have to say that skin on the salmon, it gets super crisp. You're not supposed to put it in the taco. Uh, some people don't like it. I love it, I think it's like seafood bacon. So I like getting that skin side really crisp. Let's take a look at the salmon, see where we're at. All right, so that salmon is done. Oh, look at that crisp skin. Now, if you don't have an instant rate thermometer, another way you can check is just to break it open. Because again, we're gonna crumble this fish up into large chunks for tacos anyway. And you can see, cooked on the outside, little bit of pink in the middle, that's perfect. Salmon's rested and it's time to make tacos. Now the first thing you wanna do is take two dinner forks. We're just gonna pull apart the salmon meat. You just wanna break it into large chunks. I don't wanna make cat food here. You know, you wanna know that it's recognizable salmon. So each of these pieces of salmon will make about three tacos. And like I said, the skin is so good. Now, I might put a few of the pieces of skin in my tacos, not everyone's a fan. Mmm, mmm, it's like bacon. Love it. All right, so now to make a nice big platter. This platter my husband bought because he loved it with the copper and the white. It's really hard to figure out what to put on here because it's so darn big. And uh, we discovered it's perfect for tacos, especially if you're having a, a party or as you like to say here in Boston, a patty. I'm a big taco over stuffer. I have been my whole life. But making a good taco that you can pick up easily and not make a mess when you eat it requires fewer toppings and a little, a little restraint on my end. Now I'm gonna put the um, slaw and the dressing on. Now I'm gonna put this dressing on twice. I like to get it right on the salmon, but I also like to put it on top of the taco too. The crema, that lovely green color, and the slaw. My dear friend Greer, who was my roommate in culinary school, and uh, I was in her wedding, she was in my wedding, and she lives down the road. She and I can eat all of these in one sitting. I mean, this is our kind of food. It's healthy, it's fun. And then a little bit of crema on top. Right, isn't this fun if you were having just some people over on a casual weekend, and it was nice out, and you came out with a big thing like this, salmon tacos. 
All right, I like to sprinkle a few limes on the platter because I like fresh limes on tacos. And last but not least, hot sauce. I love hot sauce and I try all different hot sauces. I bought two new ones today and I'll probably put, um, I've tried them both. They're both good, they're both different. I'm gonna put, ooh, that one got a lot of hot sauce. Did you see that? That's gonna be a spicy one. And then I'm gonna do half on that one. And on this side, I'm gonna do this other one. Have a little hot sauce tasting. Oh, those look good. Come here, you. Mm. That was a big bite, <laughs> but it's so good because I wanted to taste all those flavors. That's it for me, Killer Salmon Tacos. See you next time. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're excited to cook this week. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You can get today's recipes and more for free at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash Julia at home.